Hello guys, today we will talk about a new feature in the newly released past 3 called mutation testing, which will help you to, well, test the quality of your tests, which is a bit similar to another automation feature called test coverage. So what does it mean to have 100% or some percent of test coverage or mutation testing percent? We will compare those in this video. So here's my example. Recently I've shot a video about mini CRM in Laravel based on Laravel Breeze and if we run PHP Artisan test on that there are tests automatic by Laravel Breeze that come with Laravel Breeze and I added one test feature test file on top client test basically testing the CRUD. Visually the project looks like this so we're testing client CRUD the form that it works, the edit form and delete functionality. This is the actual test file. So we create user and a client and then we test if user can access client's CRUD, expecting the text to be certain text, then also check roles and permissions for admin and user who can see the button, whether you can create client with certain data and update client and delete client. Also checking the permissions for deleting. That's it, nothing really too fancy. And as you can see, the test passes when you run PHP Artisan test or another syntax is vendor bin pest. Same result. Now let's add a few flags to pest and see the coverage and mutation testing. By the way, if you need to learn how to test with Laravel and pest and PHP unit, we have a few courses on Laravel daily. So one of them is testing for beginners. One of the top three most popular courses on our website and then we recently updated the advanced level testing with like mocking, faking things like how to test upload files or events listeners and stuff like that. So I will link both in the description below. Now back to the video. Side note, to make it work on your machine it's important otherwise it would not work you have to have xdebug or pcov installed and configured. Read the documentation for those how to do that in your web server. But basically if we run pest with dash dash coverage, it will not only run the test suite, but show the list of files that were touched by those tests and show whether all the methods were touched from that file. For example, we're interested in client controller. And what does it mean to have 90% covered by test? If we read the official documentation of PEST, it measures the percentage of the code that is executed during testing. Which means that from that file, 10% are not executed while running those tests. And here we have the line numbers to look at that were not executed. So if we go to line 24 in that controller, this one. And indeed, in our client test, we do not have the test that tests the create page. We only test the create functionality with store route, not create. And another line was 45, which is identical thing. We did not test the edit form. So in other words, code coverage or test coverage shows what methods or what functionality was not executed during the testing, which means probably you haven't tested some pages or some endpoints, which may be fine. You don't have to have 100% code coverage, but it may be a helpful metric. Now, mutation testing also will show percentage, but in a different way. If we run pest with dash dash mutate, it will also run the test, but only for controllers that we specified, and it will do something like this. And let me explain. We have 85% mutation test score with two untested and 12 tested mutation. Let's go a bit higher. So it tests the client controller because I specified that to do so in the client test, we have covers. This is how you enable mutation testing for certain files. So as you can see, mutation test didn't even run tests for other files, just six test passed. So it didn't touch the Laravel Breeze default ones. And then after the test suite successfully passed, if it didn't pass successfully, mutation testing wouldn't even work. Then what PEST does is goes through the methods and tries to make mutations, which means, in other words, small changes in the code of the file of client controller and then runs the tests again and see if the tests still pass. For example, if we remove that line, will the page work? It shouldn't work, it should throw an error and tests should fail, right? Or for example, if we change any of those array key items, will the test still pass? They shouldn't pass, right? And this is exactly what mutation testing is testing, that after simple changes in your code, your tests would fail. 
they should fail. And for every failed test with every new mutation, you get a point to the score. Now let's get back here. What is happening? Client controller, line 17, decrement integer, and this is a bad icon, right? X. What do we have on line 17? This. And then down below, we have the explanation of that line 17, that something is wrong with it. Decrement integer. This is what mutation test has done. It tries to decrement some number from 20 to 19 and see if the test still pass. In our case, it identified that we don't have the test or assertion that asserts that we have 20 rows of data. In our code for clients index, we just have assert OK and we expect to contain the company name of a client we just created. So we just test one client, but we don't test that the table has pagination with 20 records. Similar example is on the same method line 17, it tries to increment integer and the tests with that change still pass, which is a red flag in mutation testing. Then the other changes were, okay, remove method call on line 29. So in client controller line 29, if we remove that call, that method, it tries to do this, rerun the code and it would obviously fail because we have assertion for user create client and we expect the client to be in the database, which fails if that line does not exist. So then mutation testing pass for that line. And then for line 30 to 37, tries to remove array item, as I mentioned already, and see if the tests fail. And we successfully tested that because we expect each field to be with correct value. Now, for example, if we have instead of this one, we have request validated. Let's see what mutation testing will say. We will run that again. See, we have two untested and 12 tested. By the way, tested means okay, untested. Untested means failure. So it's not pass and fail. The terminology is tested or untested mutation. So we run that again. Similar thing happened, but now we have four tested and two untested. So those two untested cases were still flagged as untested. But then here, since we don't have that detailed array in here anymore, it doesn't make mutation, it doesn't go deeper. So then the only mutation that is executed is actually only for that line 29, remove method call. So it doesn't try to do anything with array item because, well, there's no array in the controller anymore. Now, how do we fix? How do we improve our mutation score? And again, similar with code coverage, you don't have to improve it. There is no kind of sacred goal to have 100% mutation testing score, but it may help you flag the flaws in your cases, untested cases. Code coverage shows unexecuted lines of code mutation testing shows that you may have run those lines but didn't test enough cases. And let's actually test one of those cases. I've prepared this solution, which is not ideal. Actually, probably I would do it in a different way, but just for the demonstration. Let's create 20 clients and we have one client on top with before each. So we already have one client in the database. So let's create 20 more. So we have 21 in the database and then we'll load the page. And then we expect that the first client is in the table, but the last client isn't, which means it's on the second page. That kind of proves that we have pagination. Again, this is one way to do that. I just came up with that idea very quickly. And let's see what mutation will show. So two untested and four tested. We run again. We have seven pass test and now we have one and five. So increasing the pagination from 20 to 21 now is tested. However, that test didn't test the other way around that 19 doesn't work. Actually, let's quickly simulate that. So we expect that to contain duplicate line. How do we do clients second to last with collections? Okay, let's try sort by descending ID, then take two and then first company name. Not entirely sure, but let's try it out. Let's rerun mutation and we have a failed test. So this is an example that mutation doesn't even work. It isn't even launched because first you need to fix the test suite. So I'm kind of happy that I introduced that error. So to show you this case. Now the actual correct result of doing that is I didn't know that you can do collection, then take minus two, which is last two records, then first and then company name like this. And then if we run mutation tests again, as you can see, we have passed test suite and then mutation score 100%.
which means both decrementing and incrementing integers, cause the test to fail. You can read about mutation testing in the official docs. What do you think? Again, it requires Xdebug or PCOV configured on your machine. But I think especially for bigger projects where you may leave untested cases, this is a great addition to the testing framework. What do you think? Will you use mutation testing? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.